Welcome to Manufacturing Tech Australia, the official podcast partner for CMAT 2023. Join your hosts Shane Williams and Paul Mason as they share the latest manufacturing and tech news and explore innovative solutions to help you improve your business. So Shane and I are at CMAT Day 2. Um, we're about to jump on a bus to head to UTS, who's got a really good reputation locally for collaboration with SMEs, multinationals, universities, and building that whole ecosystem together. So what are you looking forward to today, Shane? I hear our friends at Young Henry's have got a brewery down there where they're trying to develop technologies using algae to uh, deal with the carbon dioxide that comes out of the brewing process. But I'm frankly just hoping to try some beers. Yeah, fantastic. Let's go. Day two, we've just come back from the UTS test lab and we ran into this guy, Matt, there, who came on the tour with us. How you doing? So we thought we'd have a bit of a chin wag about what we saw out there at the lab. Yeah, yeah. what did you see there, Shane? As my key highlight was going to be the uh, Young Henry's Brewery <laughs> and particularly the digital twin of the brewery that they've got, which I thought was really interesting in Germany. Turns out it is the pub of no beer at the moment. There was absolutely nothing going on there, which is unfortunate, but some pretty cool tech, particularly the concept of the digital twin and what they're learning there and the idea of trying to create this whole carbon neutral thing I thought was pretty exciting. We also spent some time with Nokia in their 5G labs. They reckon this is one of only two in the world and one of their facilities based here in Sydney and they're able to show us the 5G tech, the 4G tech, the fact that they're using that not just in a commercial context to be able to provide coverage for TPG and Optus but also that they're using it in mines and things like that to run the robots, the trucks and whatnot, which I thought was pretty cool. And then obviously they had some other extensions of using some of the other capabilities at the facility to test some of the kit, which I thought was pretty exciting. But yourself, Matt? Look, I wouldn't count your chicken before you hatch because one of my favourite parts from today was all the AI vision. AI vision in terms of counting sheep as they hop onto the boats, one of our biggest exporters here in Australia. Quite happily with that one though, that was from Perth. So that was uh, from my hometown, so very excited about that one. Nice. Also, you can use it to identify fish. So they were talking about how Sydney fish market is the second largest in the world and how you can, in the future, you might be able to go and buy fish online. You can tell what grade that fish is prior to purchasing it. So you know exactly what you're gonna be getting, what you're gonna be receiving at home. And then they spoke about AI vision, identifying things such as people, phones, buses, cars, and where all that's gonna go in the future to help us with identifying people if we ever go down that path. And then the other thing which uh, I was going to mention today was in relation to the program which they call Optics over at UTS there. So Optics, fantastic program. I know I've just met you boys but I'm really big about educating and education, helping anyone else we can out there in the market. So I think it's a huge way forward. Optics at UTS is all about how we can involve SMEs, so small medium enterprises, in with the university as well, in with the university to what we can do to teach students and to give them projects to work on. And they do it, was it absolutely free or they, they, they do it yeah. with, with, a, with a, uh, a catch of trying to help uni students and develop them as best as they can. So I think it's a fantastic yeah. program. A robot yeah. card, card dealer was pretty exciting. Oh, that robot yeah. card dealer. I wonder <laughs> yeah. if we can take that to the, to the, uh, to the casino. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? And then so, Paul, yeah. what's your takeaways, bud? Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, I was going to say also exciting now the optic stuff with the, yep. the students and seeing them work on these real life problems oh, around sustainability and everything. It was great. Yep. I really like the prototype lab downstairs. There's 3D metal printing there. We saw a speed 3D printer down there. Yeah. Locally designed and built. Great technology here from Australia. And all the other prototyping gear and technology and capability they've got there yeah. was really impressive. Also, largest fully anechoic chamber in the Southern Hemisphere. I've First seen... time ever in that. Yeah, yeah. That was cool. That's impressive. I would immensely help me 20 odd years ago in my electronics <laughs> engineering time um, having one of those around. But so yeah, there was a full anechoic chamber. There was another full anechoic chamber and another semi-anechoic so real great setup for prototyping and validation for any designers out there who want to make use of the lab there at UTS so yep. I guess overall pretty impressive setup very good um, and seem to be very encouraging of collaboration with businesses they give businesses all the rights to the IP that they develop there so really collaborative business first kind of culture that's what I liked about it the most yeah 100% uh, it was a great day there I think a, a great exercise to go and see the union what they're doing to help develop Absolutely. Yeah. All right. That's one in the bag for day two. So, 100%. Matt, thanks for being on the show. Thanks yeah. for having me on the show. And uh, don't worry, re-download the podcast. I've <laughs> got it saved to my other podcast. So, my long flight back home to Perth, I've got some listening to do. Fantastic. Awesome. awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Matt. Cheers, bud. I'm here with Michelle from Fork Pro. Michelle, welcome to Manufacturing Tech Australia. Thank you, thank you for having me. So you've got to stand here and behind us is the Forklift Championships, which I believe you might be giving away one of the presentations. I for. am, yes, I'm awarding the winner, I believe. So that's exciting. I've been watching them all day. It's a good calibre of operations there. So I'm excited to see who comes out with the win. Awesome. And can yep. you tell us a little bit about Fork Pro? 
Four Pro is a registered training organisation. We run material handling equipment training from a business to business perspective. So we go into warehouses in the logistics and warehousing and supply chain industries and we provide all the material handling equipment training for the operators. We're based in New South Wales but we run our services nationally. I have trainers in New South Wales, also in Queensland, but where needed we'll travel to client sites. We've been around since 2002, mm -hmm. 21 years this year. Okay. We're a family business but we do it well and we do it with passion. And a pretty damn important one if it sounds like. Very important. Uh, it was founded by Todd Brennan who's still the CEO and director. Yeah. He's very passionate and as are the rest of us about safety. Yeah. We want everybody to go home at the end of the day. As you can see these are high risk pieces of equipment. We need to make sure that they're operating them safely so that they get to go home to their families. And I'm guessing things have changed a little bit in the last 25 years since I got my fork ticket? Exactly. Back in the day you could get a log book and, and just get your license pretty easily. This day and age, <laughs> this day and age thankfully fully safe work and the Australian standards have stepped in and, and made it a little bit harder to get their license. So most courses are three days long and there's quite a formal license assessment process to prove that you're capable of operating such a high risk piece of equipment. So yeah. yeah, yeah. And we're watching the championships behind here and a lot of the judging behind as in not just speed but safety in particular. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's it's all about safety at the end of the day. Sometimes when you're working in warehousing and, and logistics and things like that, time critical operations puts pressure on you. So what we like to do is take a step back, remind them that yes, these things are time critical, but you've got to be making sure that you're doing things safely. Because if you're not doing things safely and there's a catastrophic event, that's going to push the whole time sensitivity thing out the window. So we need to get home to our families at the end of the day. We're very passionate about that. And so we go in and just make sure that's happening. 100%. Oh, it looks like one of the contestants has just wrapped up. Thanks very much yeah. for being on the show. No worries. Thank you so much Thank for having me. Cheers. We're here day two at the Knowledge Theatre at CMAT 2023. We've had some really interesting guest speakers here over the last two days and there's another day tomorrow where we're going to be hearing some more interesting topics around supply chain, logistics, smart warehousing, automation, the whole works. If you're interested in actually sitting down and getting into some of the deeper conversations around use cases, around case studies and what's gone wrong and what's gone well, this is really interesting. We got to listen to Anna yesterday talking about Amazon. She's been on the show before. The young fella from uh, Nat was talking about the last mile earlier today. Uh, I don't know, tomorrow there's a, another panel discussion that's a lot around the sustainability and circular economy stuff. So get down here and check it out. It's pretty cool. So Tiago from Canap, welcome to the uh, show, mate. Hey. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me. Excellent. So you've just come off the Knowledge Theatre and you were talking all about innovations and efficiencies in the last mile of delivery. Yes. What can you tell us about what Knapp's working on? So basically, yep, Knapp has some ideas how to tackle the problem of the last mile. When you have a holistic view of the last mile into a value chain, it's where we have most of the energy and efforts spent, almost 50% of it. So finding solutions to the last mile is a big challenge across the industry. And we from Knapp, we have some specific products and solutions that are specifically designed and made to tackle the problem of last mile. Fantastic. So what are those solutions that you're working on at the moment? Is that something you're doing in the local market here? Yes. So actually yeah. one of the things that I mentioned, it's our micro fulfillment centers that actually Woolworths, it's one of our partners, they have a few micro fulfillment centers in our region. One of them is in, in Melbourne, in Carrum Downs. The idea for the MFC is to make your existing supermarket also highly automated warehouse. So we use subutilized areas on the existing supermarket and build a highly automated warehouse that gives you the ability to fulfill e-commerce orders, click, collect, uh, urgent orders, and being very close to the customer. So wow. making that last mile short. Wow, that's fantastic. Because that whole market is changing so quickly. Like yes, the yes, whole click and is. collect area and, and customers absolutely, more and absolutely. More I think the, with the pandemic, this whole trend that it was something that was coming up slowly, but suddenly you boom, you need to do it. So we managed to get this implemented very quickly. And like we're saying, Woolworths were very keen to, to jump into the solution with us. And yeah, and through our micro fulfillment centers and through our nano fulfillment centers, we're yeah. able to give them the ability of reduce the last mile, be able to attend their customers on an e-commerce level in a very short time. That's impressive. 
We've got some cool VR stuff here behind us. Something yes. used for simulation or planning, or but what are you using that for? Yes, so basically with our VR, we have some capabilities to show our customers how to handle and how to operate some of our equipment. We know that all the time when we talk about uh, automation, that we still have that stigma to say, oh, we're going to be getting rid of people. And that's not actually how we promote automation. We want to make the life of the operators easier. So we want to make our machine to take care of as much tasks as possible to make the operation very simple. With something like this, you can pretty much hook it on and see how easy it is. It's very intuitive, very simplified, and very ergonomic as well. So the guys doing the picking would not be bending or stretching. It's a very comfortable solution. So it's just one of the ways that when we are in trade shows like this, we can show how easy it is to operate one of our systems. It's the blending of the digital and the physical world. 100%, so. that's, the, that's the deal. That's great. Thanks for that, Tiago. Great. No, Thanks no for worries. Thank you very much, today. Paul. Yeah. Here we are, end of day two, CMAT 2023, pretty interesting day. We're here at the uh, Big Ass Bar drinking some Big Ass Lager, thanks to the sponsors. What would you highlight from today, bud? I think definitely UTS tour of the Tech Lab was pretty impressive. All the business to university collaboration, all the gear they've got there to support industry and building products and supporting with that technology was pretty impressive. Uh, we also saw some of the last minute delivery stuff from Canap. Yep. We also saw some stuff from the Knowledge Theatre. That was really impressive as well. There was loads of different speakers there if you wanted to learn something about logistics, supply chain and all the rest of it. Yeah. And we got to check out the forklift competition, see the finals for that and talk to Michelle from Fork Pro about the, some of the stuff that they're doing. I didn't win, but it was worth a shot. But good luck to the and congratulations to those who did. You didn't uh, get your beer from the UTS lab either. Yeah, and yeah, UTS, the pub with no beer. How's that? Anyway next time. Now here we are at the Big Ass Bar at the Networking Drinks. If you get a chance, get down here tomorrow because there's still some pretty interesting stuff going on. Cheers. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in to Manufacturing Tech Australia with Shane and Paul, recorded on the traditional lands of the Bunurong and Wurundjeri people. For more information, jump on the manufacturingtech.au website. Remember to hit the follow button to join us again next time as we continue to explore the intersection of manufacturing and technology.